reaction. Uh, yesterday, you were, uh, you three were announced as uh, research board champions. Uh, how does it feel? Uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you get a lot of reactions from uh, co-workers uh, yet? Or, uh... Some, but not that many yet at, at this point. But that will come once I we will get back to work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we haven't been back to work yet, so. <laughs> but I've gotten a lot of emails this morning from my team, and yeah, great. Yeah, and um, what about uh, what about you? Um, how uh, the, the the champions of last year? How how has your uh, last year been? Well, I've had congratulations from pretty much every nook and cranny of the Am University of Amsterdam and the Amsterdam University of Applied Science, even months after the announcement uh, uh, of my research uh, support championship uh, because uh, uh, people were reading uh, a news item somewhere in a newsletter they hadn't gone around uh, before. Uh, so they took the opportunity to congratulate me anyway. Uh, so a lot of congratulations. Um, and, and that's pretty much, uh, I think, the only thing I have really noticed about being a research support champion. So if the new champions are a bit apprehensive about what's coming to them and don't worry <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks for the reassuring words <laughs> yeah for me I, I can give you the same uh, assurance nothing much really changes except a lot of people uh, it's always nice to hear that many people are uh, happy with the way you are performing your uh, your tasks mm -hmm. So it's good for yourself feeling, but that that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree with uh, Mariette and uh, and Bob. Uh, yeah, I think first of all, uh, it's it's of course a great honor uh, to receive uh, this title and uh, championship. Um, I received an amazing amount of uh, congratulations from uh, colleagues uh, within, but also outside uh, the University of Twente. And of course, um, I got a lot of flowers, beautiful flowers. And I think, but, um, and also a very important thing is that it has also highlighted uh, the importance of uh, research support. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, now the theme of uh, this year's Surf Research Week is breaking boundaries. Um, what boundaries have uh, have you uh, broken recently? Perhaps uh, Michelle can. Uh, uh... Now, the, the, um, as uh, yesterday, I don't know if all of you heard, but uh, the the nomination was on part of a, a special project, and what we achieved was uh, that um, uh, working all the all the uh, partners and uh, external, internal and external partners work together to to achieve a major win in uh, doing MRI analysis and uh, yeah, together with people from LUMC and external partners in an anonymized and, uh, way. And that, yeah, that's a major breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I can go into the technical details, but I don't think that is appropriate for now. Okay, but in short, you connected both uh, technical components, uh, yep. MRI scanners yep. with the uh, the patient database of the yep. hospital, but also you connected the the people who yep. were yes. responsible yep. for uh, from yeah, and, those and yeah, and in a, in a more technical way from uh, uh, from uh, MRI data for raw and DICOM and consent up to external uh, to internal and external partners, and that is, mm -hmm. I think, it's a major achievement. Yeah, great. Right. Um, and also yesterday you mentioned uh, for you also an important aspect is not to complicate things or not to make things not. That's yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's that is. I think that's major important is that because um, sometimes we tend to abstract or more conceptualize stuff and then uh, without integrating things and then only the complexity is gained and nothing is yeah is integrated mm -hmm. and that is yeah that annoys me a lot yeah <laughs> um and Serkan what's yes 
what does the breaking boundaries uh, yes. motto mean to you? Well, I, I believe I helped people to break their boundaries. Uh, the researchers, students, alumni is also something very important for the, for the universities, I believe, uh, in, in moving their their workflows, their, their research uh, from, from local uh, computers to, to cloud computing, which is becoming more, more and more mainframe, especially for, for studies like uh, artificial intelligence or advanced topics. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I developed a, a computing platform and I, I'm also operating it, providing all the support and also making, making sure that everything works properly, gets updated uh, regularly. And uh, people are, uh, they found a ready to use uh, working environment uh, where they can they can prototype, uh, they can try new things, they can self learn actually these topics because uh, of course we have uh, researchers who who are experts on these topics, especially if they have a background or in some disciplines they already get used to use work like this like astronomy, particle physics. They are they are using this kind of uh, systems for a long time, but there are still many many disciplines who are really new to to to, to this topic. So um, by lowering the barrier and providing a ready to use uh, environment, I think I, I, I have time to, to break their boundaries. Yeah, okay. Um, and also um, more in a more literal sense, you are also working in international uh, projects. Um, that's correct. So um, the Faculty of Geoinformation Science and uh, Earth Observation, I, ITC is in fact a quite um, multinational uh, faculty and uh, it was founded about 70 years ago to, to provide training actually uh, to, to countries, especially in global south. So um, most of our, our students are, are in fact from, from, from those countries. So, uh, and our alumni is also quite multinational. So we have a lot of uh, international projects uh, mm -hmm. that, that are ongoing. And, and uh, basically all, all of our partners and also people who, who take place in, in the research can, can utilize uh, the, the platform uh, for their needs. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, interesting. Um, Tara, you have also been very active in breaking boundaries and bringing people together. I think the yeah, I think the the boundaries that I break are maybe different than the boundaries that that these gentlemen break because I break maybe the the boundaries between institutions and the boundaries between um, departments and the boundaries uh, between uh, networks. So that we can all try to work together on research support rather than starting up all our own initiatives or trying to get initiatives to work together mm -hmm. um, so that we can support things a little more holistically. Mm -hmm. um, because, um, uh, well, one of the things that were mentioned uh, in your, uh, well, uh, by the people who nominated you for, uh, for this award is that you were very active in bringing together all the universities of applied sciences to work together in a DCC, Digital Competence Center. Yep. That must have been a hell of a job. <laughs> um, it was an interesting job and I, I didn't do it alone. So that was, you know, thankful. Thankfully, one of the roles that I did take on my uh, myself is making sure that I called the, the contact people or my ne own network in the various uh, UASs to say, look, there's an email that's gone to this person. You may not have gotten it because um, the communication sometimes doesn't work out properly or whatever, or they're on vacation. Just letting you know it's there. Let me know if you're interested in joining. And um, I used a lot of network skills to to make it happen. And I, I think, yeah, that's... Oh. So we now we have 20 from the 36 um, mm -hmm. UAS is working oh. on, the, on the project. Oh. And everyone's welcome. <laughs> 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 and why is uh, why is this important? This uh, DCC, um, I, slightly different than what the universities have done with their local DCCs. We are um, providing a a second line network uh, organization for supporters. So when they are don't necessarily have the question, the answer to the question that's coming from their own institution, they've got somewhere that they can go and get an answer on data stewardship or uh, fair data or any uh, other number of things that is data related right now. Um, future plans is that it's actually going to be supporting open science as a whole. Uh, but at this point, you have to start somewhere. We started with data. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a second line place where supporters can go to receive the support that they need. 
in order to support the researchers. Yeah. And so if they don't have this knowledge in their own institution. They know where they can just, go. You put all the knowledge together. Yeah. yeah. And we can work together to avoid everybody reinventing the wheel and just not mm -hmm. uh, coming together to do it. Yeah. Okay. It's something very important, right? Especially if you initiate something, because there is a lot of potential that people really reinvent or try to reinvent the wheel. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I don't see, I think that's wasted energy that we can be using to work together to make things even better than the initial plan was instead of trying to, you know, recreate that plan. Okay, let's see how we can then make it better and accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Um, Mariette, maybe you also want to uh, comment on the theme, breaking boundaries. Well, I think I'm going with Sarah because uh, uh, if I look at what I'm doing within the Amsterdam, University of Amsterdam, Amsterdam University of Applied Science, it is very much about breaking boundaries between different parts of the institution. Um, originally, I work at the library of uh, both institutions, uh, but two years ago, uh, I was uh, sort of handed over or uh, uh, lent to our IT department. I've been there uh, for two years, uh, two or three years now, uh, much to my delight, uh, because uh, it had, had made me understand a lot better why things weren't progressing as quickly as I thought they would be able to progress. Um, and on the other hand, I, I mean, I've been... Sometimes uh, if I uh, use a Dutch term, an olievrouwtje, so someone who goes around with oil to uh, make everything run smoothly, uh, between the library and our IT department, and I also have, I have a lot of network uh, within the faculties. Uh, so I'm trying to bring people together uh, who may not find each other uh, naturally without me interfering. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to... to do a useful way of interviewing. Okay, um, and uh, Maria, what boundaries have you broken lately? Um, I also agree with, with Sarah and with uh, Mariette, uh, but also uh, we are uh, continuously working on finding um, the right balance between uh, the law and providing the right uh, support to researchers. Um, we want to support researchers um, as much as well as, as we can, of course. And uh, therefore, uh, we want to uh, provide uh, effective, uh, efficient and uh, especially um, demand driven research support. And the demand driven part um, is uh, very important for us because um, we uh, would like to identify the needs of the of the researchers and to achieve this. Um, um, we uh, put um, together a team that uh, consists um, of different uh, disciplines. Uh, because uh, research uh, support includes uh, many uh, different disciplines. And uh, you can think uh, about uh, research data management, ethics, privacy, uh, communication, uh, grant support. Uh, we, uh, we organize the research support in, in, in this way. And I think this is one of the uh, yeah, important things uh, we have to do and we want to achieve uh, for, for the future. Great. Um, and uh, well, lastly, Bob, have you uh, have you also broken uh, any boundaries? Um, I don't know whether I've broken boundaries, but I've seen a lot of boundaries in the last year and I've tried to break. Them. OK, <laughs> OK. Um, and and the, well, in a university medical center like uh, Amsterdam, UMSA, of course, there's lots and lots of data that people are somehow, they are willing to share them, but they also consider them to be their own data. And that's, I think, something that is quite typical for, for life science researchers. Um, one of the bigger uh, achievements over the, over the last periods is that we are really working on making it easier by using technology to share data in a safe and secure way. I think that's 
well, pretty important to get that done. It's not completely finished, but that, uh, that's for me the, the main focus at the moment. Yes. So you, 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 there's this tendency that people um, are in such circumstances putting in rules and regulations and working methods and documents, but we can use technology to facilitate a secure sharing of data and making it easier, but still secure. Yeah. So, so the the hurdle is not only that it's privacy sensitive data, but also that researchers sort of like to yeah. keep it to themselves. Yeah. Or is yeah, that that makes it safer, of course. But they also they want to share, and then they see yes. that it's that there's a lot of uh, privacy rules and regulations, and a lot of security checks that you have to put in place. Mm -hmm. And again, using technology, you can yeah. help them to comply with all the rules and still share their data. Do you is recognize it, this? Is it is it? Um... What I always say, uh, people uh, like others to share their data, but not share their own. And, yeah, yeah, and that's 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 human, right? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. If I if I'm standing in it as a traffic jam, I always think, what are all these people doing on the road? They never think, <laughs> why am I here? But okay. And uh, but what what you try to 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 say is that give the give the other uh, uh, the the confidence to share their data as well. Yeah, is that the summary yeah. of? Yeah, that's what. So, but and again, by using a technology. So, in in, in this yeah, sense, exactly. you, you are using a cloud with uh, the proper policies in place. Technology is not solution to everything, but it would definitely help. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So, um. Well. All of these champions are uh, all have a very uh, different backgrounds, uh, more uh, HPC and IT, more uh, research data management uh, support. Um, um, and that is also partly, of course, related to the fact that uh, universities uh, of applied sciences and universities uh, organ organize the research support in different ways, I suppose. Um, is there someone who would like to who 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 sort of has a broad overview and um and can comment on that? I don't know if we organize them in different ways. I mean, um, Saxion's University of Applied Sciences has it organized in a similar way as Twente. That's not because we are beside each other. That's just because that's the we try to create a one-stop shop for researchers that enables them to not have to figure out where they have to like the 900th person they have to find in order to get this service. Um, and I think, I don't think that, that there's necessarily a difference in how they're uh, organized because of the type of institution they are. Mm -hmm. The differences can exist because of the needs of the researchers or mm -hmm. the um, the way the board has figured it uh, the, the institution out. I mean, uh, if your institution has a lot of of faculties with a lot of autonomy, it can be difficult to organize a centralized research support organization. Yeah. But that's not because um, we're a different kind of institution. It's because the institution is is organized differently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Mariette, you work for both Havia and Uva. Uh, yeah. How does that work then? I, I, I agree with Sarah completely. Uh, it, it, it's not about uh, uh, organizing stuff. It's not about, let's call it the back end. Um, my cat is trying to get my tea back from my cup. I'm trying to prevent that. You're going to behave now. You're going to the ground. So, um, it's not about the back end, about how we organize things. It is about the question of the researcher. I see uh, differences between uh, UVA and AOAS, not so much in organization of the back end, but in questions of researchers. I have a University of Amsterdam has a very long tradition of doing research. So if I talk uh, uh, about informed consent with a, a University of Amsterdam researcher, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. He knows pretty much how to do that. 
he knows that he uh, uh, can ask the help of uh, an ethics review board uh, to see whether uh, the letters of informed consent are clear enough. Uh, but it happens that at the Amsterdam University of Applied Science, if I talk with a researcher about informed consent, their eyes go sort of glassy and they really don't know what I'm talking about. So those are different uh, uh, questions, but it's, and that, uh, of course, uh, necessitates a different kind of support. I mean, I don't have to support University of Amsterdam researchers in writing informed consent letters, but that same support uh, can be needed at the Amsterdam University of Applied Science. And that it, it stems, in, in my case, it, it stems from the age of the research tradition. I mean, the University of Amsterdam have been doing it for ages. Um, uh, Amsterdam uh, uh, University of Applied Science, it, it, it's a very much shorter period of time. Uh, people have been doing research and, and they're still figuring out how to do research and how to do good research. And, and how that, to incorporate that, that also, the new... it makes an important uh, difference. Uh, uh, let me add that um, sometimes when I'm absolutely fed up with politics at the University of Amsterdam, I'm always very happy to be able to concentrate on the Amsterdam University of Applied Science because their things are new and their people are still open to uh, a certain thoughts and a certain way of doing things. So that, that also helps me. Uh, uh, to keep doing every day what I do, uh, that I can alternate between the two institutions because uh, of their own character. Yeah, that, that was a nice point, I, I believe, because changing a culture is really something quite difficult, whereas maybe building a culture could be a little bit more e easier, especially if the people are open, open mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So we talked a bit about the uh, digital competence centers already that uh, both uh, the universities of applied sciences and universities are collaborating uh, in. Um, it, is there uh, anything, um, uh, what, what, what else is necessary at this point um, to strengthen the, um, uh, uh, the profession of research or, or yeah, the, the research board uh, in general in the Netherlands? Uh, what what should policymakers, uh, for example, uh, do? Understand that good research doesn't happen without good research support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would help a lot. <laughs> Amen no, yeah, to that. that. Yeah. Sorry. Absolutely. Amen to that. I mean, absolutely. Sarah's completely right. Yeah. So Change. this understanding is not. Uh, isn't uh, widely spread enough, uh, you think? No, no, I don't think that the, um, the need to support research support is as uh, evident as it should be for um, for decision makers, policy makers. Is that in funding or? Uh... In funding, in availability of trainings, in availability of um, staffing, in ability, you, know, you see it everywhere. Uh, and a lot of times we do things as research support because it needs to get done. And then we do it with what we've got to make it work and the, um, the ability to make it sustainable or the ability to, uh, that's, that's missed at a higher level that's responsible for enabling that. I, I always uh, say like uh, changing it from personal heroism to institutionalized support. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, uh, there are uh, we are an example of that, and and, and uh, the winners from last year, uh, it's it's appreciated, but and of course it's appreciated, but it's mostly appreciated from the people doing the actual work, the researchers. But it should be going up. Mm -hmm. and, it should be an expectation. If you yeah. if you uh, want to do good research, that you provide the researchers with the res res the support that they need in order to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe that's also partly true for the infrastructure, because, for example, when somebody starts to, to a university, let's say as a researcher, they got an email account, right? They got mm -hmm. to access to office applications. They can use these uh, video conferencing tools nowadays very easily. So these are given as granted. You, you don't question. But if you need a computing infrastructure, for example, then you need to ask for it. Mm -hmm. So why we don't provide it as a, as a default uh, thing that can access directly? Of course, if they have significant needs, it can be discussed further, 
but uh, I think maybe one thing may, which might be changed in the future could be could be this. So we, we should provide people the required infrastructure uh, for their research. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think here now the virtual research environments, they will play a significant role because they are becoming more and more common in all disciplines. I, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I also wanted to to add about what is missing is very often I see that in research support we are working on projects to start a new facility or a, a, a new service to the researchers community. And even if it's a successful project, the step from that being a the outcome of a project to a regular service is often underestimated. Um, and I don't know whether the others uh, um, recognize this, but I've seen that now so often that you develop something and then you need to put it somewhere in the organization and organize support for the users of it. And that then is very difficult. Is this something other people recognize? Absolutely, and uh, yet, so, uh, because sometimes uh, even the support is is organized for by researchers themselves, and yep. researchers tend uh, to be uh, uh, on a on a temporary uh, budget. So after like a couple of years, they leave. So then the, the project is left as well, and and the infrastructure and the support that came with it as a personal heroism. Again, sorry for the for the uh, for the repetition, but it's it's gone, and that's so. Yeah, would be would be nice if that would be more sustainable or. or uh, that's my opinion on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I see we have lost connection with Maria. I hope she will uh, come back. Um, <laughs> I also saw that there uh, were some questions or remarks in the chat, and my colleague Judith uh, was keeping an eye on them. So, are there yeah. any uh, are there any uh, questions that uh, that the uh, participants uh, have put? Hi, Josje. Yes, indeed. I have uh, a question from Mariska Bierkens. Uh, she's asking, are there any examples where data governance produce procedures have been worked out for the entire institute? Because otherwise, indeed, figuring out all the ELSI issues again per project. Is this uh, question clear for somebody? Or would you like me to repeat this? Well, let's start with first. Can she also clarify? Uh, yes, you have to clarify herself, perhaps. Is it possible that she can uh, make herself heard, <laughs> Mariska? Uh, we have to look her up. <laughs> I think you are unmuted yeah. now, Mariska. So, uh, hi. Uh, like uh, Bob just said, uh, with the research project, it's continuously uh, well going through the struggle, uh, making data also reusable or not. And what, like I'm from the Netherlands Cancer Institute, and I, I also definitely recognize the issue of like, oh, we want to uh, make data available to other researchers. We want to reuse the data in the projects that we have. Uh, but as long as there is no data governance procedures from top down, then it's searching from everywhere. And the, the bottom up approach doesn't really work. Like the open science call is basically the bottom up approach that you say like, we want open science. We want that data is optimally reusable. Uh, so I'm, I'm just wondering like, is there an example of an institute that has it all in place and that's like, okay, from top down, there is this bottom uh, that there is this approach uh, stating for the ethical and the, the legal part and the social implications what uh, can and can't be done in the boundaries. Because I'm seriously interested actually in uh, existing examples. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know when is, I... is, is the silence giving you the answer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the silence is giving me the answer. So in, in the meantime, we just have to work with the, the ores that we have in that case per project. Uh, and perhaps hooking with the regional health RI hubs, which are being generated. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering, and that's a question to all of the DCC members. Do you have connections with your regional health RI spokesperson? Well, as okay, a DCC okay. practice, for practice-based research, we are one DCC for the whole country. Uh, mm -hmm. for all the 36 um, uh, UASs. So we do have connections with Health RI. We do not have connections with um, regional hubs of Health RI. That, like, not from, out, from the DCC themselves. It's possible that the UASs themselves have then connections with the regional hubs, but we, as, as the DCC PO, we do not have... Um, contact with the regional hubs, just contact with the overarching organization. Yeah, may, may I try to answer Maria's uh, question? <laughs> it, um, I don't think there is, I, I don't, wouldn't even, I wouldn't know it of an example where there is, the, the governments has been taken care of uh, top down for all sorts of projects. Um, but there are examples for particular types of projects. Now, for instance, the, the, the Andrea Maitre environment can be used to not to collect data, but it can be used to share data and to share computing facilities uh, with people from outside your institution. And then because you are in that platform automatically you follow all the rules and guidelines uh, if you stick to the end user uh, rules uh, that are in place. So it depends on what, so there's not, there isn't a remedy for all sorts of things. And especially if you are thinking about, for instance, Internet of Things, remote sensing, which is now becoming a, a, a bit more often occurring or acquiring data or national registries with open access. These sort of things are very difficult to regulate. But for analysis of already existing data, I think there are platforms in place, several. Well, maybe regarding the first question, well, I, I'm not an expert on this topic, but like what I can think of, maybe international collaboration can help with this because eventually yeah. The, the, the issue that we are talking about is not something specific to, to the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. All the countries, in fact, uh, yes. have the same issue. And we, we can, of course, imagine that there are, there are some countries which are in a better position. At least maybe they may have a long, longer history with these open science practices, uh, data governance, and that, that kind of things. Uh, so in that case, maybe the transfer of uh, knowledge, know-how, and experience can be really uh, useful to, to start something here in the Netherlands. Yeah. Okay. Is there another question, Judith? Hi, Yoshi. Let me have a look. Uh, no, only a suggestion from Susan Brandschut. Hmm? Only a suggestion uh, for an answer on, on, on the question of uh, Mariska. <laughs> okay, great. Well, so that's a good, good, good. Uh, good news. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, uh, well, final question to, uh, to uh, each one of you. Um, um, to any researchers uh, watching um, uh, this session, uh, what would you like to tell them so they uh, better understand the way you work and how to, how to utilize your um, uh, expertise? Uh, uh, no complaints from the researchers' uh, point of view. Absolutely none. They know where to find you. They know where to find you. Okay, me. that's excellent. So, <laughs> no comment on that. Okay, good. Yes. Well, I, I try also my best also to somehow promote uh, the services that that we provide. 
mm -hmm. especially to the newcomers, because the other pe the people yeah. they they hear about it. But eventually, when we talk about academia, the universities, um, um, there's a high turnover. In fact, uh, people are coming uh, quite fre frequently. So it's very important to to inform them uh, at the beginning to create the connections. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah that and is how something. do you do that? Well, I have an automated email system, so <laughs> I, 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 yeah, whenever somebody actually registers to, to the University of Twente, uh, then um, uh, we have a notification in place. So with the introduction email talking about the center, the capabilities, the platform, and I, I encourage them to have a look because eventually, OK, we, we should also recognize that not everybody needs uh, competing platforms or not maybe interested in big data or artificial intelligence. But I think these kind of things are um, good to know. So it's like uh, uh, you, you should have an idea uh, about this. It doesn't need to be uh, that you, you are an, a user. So from, from that point of view, I think it's always good to uh, to uh, encourage them mm -hmm. uh, to at least have a look, try, try to understand uh, how things work. So, um, yeah. 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 Um, I think if there's a, a researcher from a UAS who's watching this or whatever and is wondering um, where they can find the support that they need, they should start in their own institution. There's a large chance that there is a community that's already started to support them and finding it can require going to the library or um, looking on the DCCPO website or that kind of thing um, to find out where they can receive the support that they need, because there is a large chance that there's already um, a group of people working hard in their own in institution that can help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Maria, luckily you are back online. Um, so the same question to you. Uh, what what should researchers know so they can better, uh, you know, uh, use the, the expertise of your uh, department? Yeah, sorry, something went uh, wrong with uh, with my computer. Uh, it happens. Uh, um, uh, the most important thing is, um, I think, to inform and to uh, have a discussion with the researchers about uh, the benefits of uh, research support. And therefore, um, at the University of Twente, we organize uh, a meeting uh, twice a year. And during this meeting, uh, we present uh, our services, the services of the research support team of our faculty. And uh, of course, all the researchers are uh, more than welcome uh, to join this session. And we, we have also uh, developed a, a website where uh, we uh, put all the information, all the relevant information uh, related to data management, ethics, uh, grant support, uh, etc. There are many topics. Uh, uh, described over there and um, I think um, researchers um, can find us uh, very well. Good and Bob the same question to you. Yeah well we have uh, one email address rdm at amsterdamumc.nl if you ask any question for support um, so that's a one stop shop like everybody wants you will get an answer. We have a Yammer platform. Um, we have on, on the internet. But even though all these things are there, I still with this quite often hear, I wish I had known earlier that I could have this support. But no, yeah. okay. we'll, we will try our best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Maria? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer your question in a different way. Uh, what, do I don't, what I don't want researchers to know. I don't want <laughs> researchers to know how many meetings online and real life uh, over and over again I have to go through to make things happen. Uh, that's something uh, I'm doing. That's something I'm sacrificing. Uh, I see uh, Sarah nods. She knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I Absolutely. know she knows what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm not going to uh, uh, bother the researcher with that. I'm uh, still continuously uh, aiming at making the route from researcher to research support as short as possible. And whether is, that is a one-stop shop uh, by way of an email address 
or a research support website, which we have, or any other means to, to shorten the time a researcher is looking around and not finding anything. Um, that, that's what I'm working for, and that's what I'll continue working for. Mm -hmm. And you also have a, a saying that uh, I've heard you use, uh, it's better to uh, ask for forgiveness than to uh, ask for permission. Can you? Yeah. Can you explain? Uh, I, I can explain that. Uh, I mean, uh, one of the most decentralized universities in Amsterdam is the uh, uh, University of Amsterdam. I mean, if our executive board says, well, uh, we are all going right, then you can uh, really uh, make a bet and you'll win big time that all faculties will turn left simply because the executive board said we were going right. So, um, it's in, in, in not in, in at the University of Amsterdam and also uh, uh, at the Amsterdam University of Applied Science. It, it's pretty hard to arrange for things top down, so you have to do that bottom up. But if you do things bottom up, uh, uh, you run into practical difficulties. Does someone have time? How much time does he or she have? Uh, does she have that time right now or in a month from now? Um, if you are really looking at, at hammering things uh, so that they can't fail, then you're writing project plan after project plan, and that project plan and then going up in the organization to the people who can decide about it. And then you have pretty much spent half a year on writing a, a project plan, but nothing has yet happened. So that's why I turned my way of working around without telling anyone. No, well, pretty much I'm doing that now. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> That my way of working, I just start things. If I find one or two people who think about something uh, the way I do, then, uh, hey, let's get together and let's have a coffee. Uh, let's see what, what can we quite practically do today or tomorrow uh, and establish for researchers. That's what, how we started our research support website as well. Uh, and four people getting together, finding it a good idea and putting the work in. And um, did they have time for that? No, of course not. But because they were convinced of, of uh, the practical purpose and, and, and the real the goal of the research support website, they put the work in. And um, that can cause a lot of problems uh, further down the road. I mean, our research support website is online three years and no one is maintaining it at the moment. But hey, we'll figure that out also. So uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking for, for permission very often. I'm, I'm, well, if I need to, I'll ask for forgiveness. But for for some reason, I I seldom have to ask for forgiveness. So I think I'm doing the right thing. Well, great. Well, thank you. That's all we have time for uh, today. I would like to uh, thank our panelists very much. Um, and uh, we hope to see you back after the break for the next session. Uh, and that is about the question, how can we compute? as energy efficient as the brain using something called material learning. Bye.